Hi everyone, this is Omya Jithyo. Welcome back to another video in my channel. In today's video, we will be discussing in detail about the different job levels that is present in the job hierarchy of a software development engineer. We will discuss about the roles that are required to be performed by individuals at different levels. We will discuss about the responsibilities that they are given in these uh, levels. Not only this, we will also discuss about what are the expectations out of everyone present and what are the criteria for getting promoted from one level to the other. Last but not the least, we will also discuss about the different salary structure that is present in different levels and how they compare with one another. One thing to keep in mind is that this video will be company agnostic in nature, which means it will discuss in general the basic trends in most of the product based tech companies. So if you are someone who is curious to know how people work out at these different levels in these product tech companies, then make sure that you stick around till the end of the video. As you guys already know, I take mock interviews, I take free mock interviews so that I can help you prepare better. So if you want to take part in these mock interviews, then make sure that you watch this video completely because I will be telling you exactly how you can be part of this mock interview series. One more quick update guys, I have changed my Instagram handle, then please, if you want to follow all daily updates that I uh, am posting and will be posting in the Instagram channel, then go ahead and follow it. I will be providing one-on-one -on -one guidance in that particular channel if you want. Before starting the video, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It will help me a lot. So without further ado, let's get started. So here in this video, we will be going in chronological manner, starting from SD1, then gradually going to SD2, and then gradually going to SD3, and so on and so forth. These views are completely mine, and what I have observed in my time of working in these product-based companies. So let's get started with SD1. SD1, as the name suggests, is Software Development Engineer 1. In some companies, it might be termed as associate member technical. In some companies, it might be termed as member technical staff. In some companies, it might be termed as software engineer. Whatever the term is, basically represents what we call in industry as an IC1. So what's an IC1? IC means individual contributor, which means generally no one reports to an IC. An IC1 means it's individual contributor level one. So SD1 is the role that all of you uh, new grads who will be graduating from university and joining a company, it will be that role. Not only this, the general years of experience uh, that this level has is somewhere between zero to around two and a half years to three years. It might vary from one company to another company, but in general, this is what is seen. For example, in Salesforce, SD1 role in most of the tech companies maps to associate member technical staff and some part of the member technical staff as well because there generally the promotion from associate member technical staff to member technical staff happens in around 11 months to 1, 1.3 years at max. But whatever may be the case, this is the first level of individual contributor. Anyone who will be joining this level, be it a new grad graduating from a university or be it a lateral hire coming in from a different company. They are expected to make mistakes. They are expected that they will require some level of handholding while doing their jobs. It is kind of expected from them that they will require some level of assistance while doing their job. What job actually they do? In most of the product-based companies, SD1s generally are focused in implementation jobs, wherein they are given some design documents, uh, complete uh, low-level design documents, and they are expected to translate those designs into production-ready code. That's why you will hear so much that you need to write production-ready code in your interview. Because as an SDE1, that is what you will primarily be doing. The expectation out of you is to write clean code and obviously support the team as and when it is required to join the on-call and support the operations team as well. Now, let's come to the SDE2 level. 
SDE 211 is also known as software development engineer 2. In some places, it is known as senior software engineer. In some places, it is known as uh, senior member technical staff and so on and so forth. As was the case with software development engineer 1. Similarly, this can also be classified as an IC2 position. Here as well, it is not generally expected that you will have someone reporting under you, although it might happen in certain cases, but in general, it is not expected at all. You will be a complete through and through individual contributor working in a team. The major expectations from someone coming in as an SDE2 or someone who has been promoted to an SDE2 level is that that particular person will require little to no hand holding at all. That person is expected to understand the system on its own. Obviously, help will be provided as and when which is required or, you know, to explain tribal knowledge. But apart from that, it is expected that the individual is a self-starter. It is expected an extremely high degree of ownership is expected out of an SDE2. Because of this extremely high degree of ownership, generally SD2s in different product-based companies actually own complete services end-to-end. -end. What do I mean by owning a service? Owning a service means that whatever happens in that service, you might not personally go and code it, but you should know about it. You should constantly think about making that service better. You should constantly think about reducing the OPEX load from that service, the operations load from that service. You should constantly think about understanding what different things that you can do with that service so that in general, the customer experience of that service is enhanced. Not only this, as an SDE2, you are expected to come up with high level design of different services that your team will be implementing, low level design of those corresponding services, and as well as as per the time requirements and the bandwidth, code them as well. And this is particularly the reason why you will see so many design-based questions in an SDE2 interview. So as an SDE2, obviously you will play an extremely active role in designing services, in designing small systems. The bio E requirement for an SDE2 role at most of the product-based companies is generally starts at around two and a half years. And it's, an, it's, an, it's a very wide range and can go up to as high as 10 years in some of the companies. Let's talk about SD3. SD3, as the name suggests, is Software Development Engineer 3. It is also an individual contributor role and the level is IC3. In different companies, it can be called as technical lead, it can be called as lead member technical staff, it can be called as computer scientist one, two, and so on and so on. SDE3 is a very senior role in most of the organization. The BIOE requirement for SDE3 generally starts at around six, six and a half years to seven years and goes on. As an SDE3, you are expected to not only own different services, but also own different services from different teams. As an SDE3, you are not only focused in one team, but have to take a wider scope of multiple teams together. As an SDE2, you are generally doing work and owning services from just the one team, and you might be involved in design discussions and affecting design changes in other teams. But as an SDE3, you are definitely expected to own large-scale distributed services, from different teams. You are expected to drive technological innovations in these teams. You are expected to drive architectural decisions of different teams that come under you. You will be the go-to person for solving many of the technical doubts of these teams. You are also expected to actively participate in org-wide technological decisions in org-wide technological design discussions. You are expected to communicate with all the stakeholders that are present for all these teams and have an active channel of communication with each and every one. We will only be discussing about SD1, SD2 and SD3 in this video. Now let us come to the discussion into what it takes to move from SD1 to SD2 and from SD2 to SD3. If you have seen this video till now, you fairly have an idea about the different roles and the expectations out of the show. 
for promotion as well the same expectations and roles of the next level apply on you while you are currently working at a level below if you are consistently meeting those expectations or punching up of those expectations is when you will be considered for promotion so for a promotion from sd1 to sd2 you are expected to start owning at least one or two services you are expected to start delivering in design based projects both high level design as well as low level design based projects you are expected to come up with innovative solutions for the problems at hand you are expected to come up with innovative solutions to decrease the opex load in the services that you are owning if you start doing these things and start showing some more leadership qualities you can actually get promoted from an sde1 role to an sde2 role similarly you have to be working at a scope of the next level so you have to be fulfilling all the duties that an sde3 is actually fulfilling or at least try so that you are meeting the expectations of an sde3 consistently you are expected to show much more leadership qualities as sde3 is a pretty high role and one has to show very high amount of leadership qualities to actually be working in that particular level and that is how promotion works in most of the product based tech companies now let us come to the salaries in this video i will definitely tell you about in general uh, what is the salary difference in the different bands a disclaimer here this is an india specific answer only and will not be in line with international salaries at all the compensation band of sd2 and sd3 are quite wide most of the companies or product tech, product based tech companies have multiple components in this compensation one is the base salary that you receive every month one is the stock that you receive in a year one is the bonus that you receive in a year generally these are the three main components that you receive as part of your compensation in one particular year whatever i am discussing is basically yearly compensation that you will be receiving whatever stocks that you receive you can sell all the stocks as and when you receive and convert it to money so stocks are generally money in our case and whatever stocks that you receive they come under the income tax and will be taxed appropriately and really if you see that an sd1 earns let's say x amount of rupees on an average in that particular level the band for sde2 then will be around 2x to 3.5x of an sde1 compensation which means an sde2 will be earning around two times to three and a half times of what an sde1 will be earning similarly if again let's say as an sd2 the average compensation is y then as an sd3 the average compensation also follows the same trend as an sd3 the amount will be 2y to 3.5y of the average sd2 amount hence as an sd3 as well you will be earning two times to three and a half times of what an average sd2 will be earning at that particular level i really hope that you like this video and i was able to make it as informative and as detailed as possible as well as relate different interviewing practices with different aspects of the role that is present i really hope that it helps you guys to understand these roles understand the work that people do in these product based tech companies if you really liked and enjoyed this video then please do give it a like and share it as much as possible and obviously subscribe to my channel if you haven't already if you want to be a part of my mock interview series then go in the instagram account that i have listed below and follow me there and message me that you want to be a part of my mock interview series that will be it for today guys this is somyajit bidding goodbye dasvidaniya